Hello everyone and welcome back to the next installment of our 10.1 Raid Guides, proudly presented by Kingston Fury. This is Crazy Puck for Method, and today we'll show you how to defeat Magmarax in Mythic Avarice. For all of our Mythic videos, we'll assume you know the fight and its mechanics on heroic difficulty. As such, these videos will show you the Mythic mechanics and focus on the strategy to defeat the Mythic version of the encounter. If you need a refresher on any of the baseline heroic abilities, check out the heroic guide for the encounter on our channel. On Mythic, Magmarax is definitely a bit of a DPS check, but not as tight as Rashok, so by the time you get to the big fire dog, you should probably be fine damage wise. Mechanically, it's a fairly simple fight overall as well, and unfortunately it's probably the biggest miss of a boss in this raid. That said, there are some new things for Mythic, and managing positioning properly is extremely important. There's two mechanical changes for Mythic. First off, one of the three targets of Molten Spittle now gets a much smaller circle and causes explosive magma when it expires. This is basically a meteor style soak mechanic, but it deals over 6 million total damage split between everyone soaking, meaning you need almost every single player to help soak. The second mechanical change is that the Searing Heat stacks will never expire on Mythic, and if you reach 40 stacks, you die. We recommend going in with a comp of 2 tanks, 4 healers, and 14 DPS. Strategy wise, there's a few things you need to do. First off, pre assign three groups of four players to handle the lava ejections. Prioritize your ranged players first, then the mobile melee players. Anyone not assigned should consider themselves a backup and be ready to soak if necessary. Simply rotate through the three groups for each set of the lava ejection soaks. Since the searing heat stacks never expire on Mythic, you'll also need to pre-plan soaking for the magma puddles from Molten Spittle and use positioning to your advantage. Each cast, there will be two large circles plus a small meteor circle. How you handle this is different for the first three casts versus all of the rest. During these first three casts, you'll have the two big circles each go to the sides of the boss, either circle on the right or star on the left. Bigwigs or DBM will assign which target goes to which side. The player targeted by the Meteor Circle should stay centered at max melee range from the boss. Every single player, except for the two with big circles and the tank currently with aggro, should soak the Meteor, and then stay there to immediately soak that entire puddle. As soon as the puddle in the middle disappears, have 4 or 5 pre-assigned players go soak the left circle, and have 2-3 to three players, plus both tanks, soak the right circle. Prioritize having sturdier classes do this, like say a Demon Hunter, as they'll end up with more stacks than the rest of the raid. Make sure the assigned helpers get to the side circles as quickly as possible once the center one disappears. You'll do this for each of the first three casts of Molten Spittle. Starting with Molten Spittle 4, you're going to stop soaking the magma puddles from the two big circles. The two players targeted should move towards the edge of the platform towards where the square and X markers on this diagram. Following the magma puddles spawning, the tank should move the boss slightly clockwise, moving away from the magma. You'll continue around the room like this for the Molten Spittle casts 5 through 10. Each cast, you'll want one of the large circles going as close to the edge of the platform as possible, and the second target going as close to the other person as they can, without taking damage from each other's circles. During all of these Molten Spittles, the Meteor target should continue simply being dead center behind the boss at max melee range. All 17 available players should soak that Magma Puddle so it disappears ASAP. Starting with Molten Spittle 9, however, you'll want to start ignoring the Meteor Circle too. If the targeted player can immune, they should run towards the edge of the room into existing Magma Puddles, pop an immunity, and then come back. If not, still run to the edge into the existing magma, but just sacrifice yourself and die to the meteor. This will save extra stacks of searing heat on your raid, which will help keep your healers from getting overloaded late into the fight. The last thing to be aware of is the knockback. You'll get three of them total, so you'll want to warlock gateway the first one, use personal movement abilities and grips or rescues for the second one, and a gateway for the third one. However, these do occur right before lava ejection soak circles. As such, if your soak assignment turn occurs right after the knockback, you'll want to prioritize using the Warlock Gateway for that one, otherwise you can end up in Narnia, miss a soak, and wipe the raid. And really that's pretty much it. Rotate around the room, soak the meteor, don't get hit by the frontal breath, rotate soak teams on the little circles, and bring down the boss before he hits 100 energy. 
If you enjoyed this guide, remember to like it and make sure you're subscribed to the channel to catch all of our previews, guides, kill videos, and more. A big thank you again to Kingston Fury for making guides like these possible. From everyone here at Method, have a great day, and we'll see you next time.